This is cooking with Sorel. So we'll have one random video a week and one cooking video a week. What's up peeps and welcome back to Sorel Plays and we are cooking. I promised a video about how to make potato salad. Nice easy recipe for you. Everyone loves a potato salad don't they? But this is not just any ordinary potato salad. We're going to have beetroots and egg in there as well. So you need yourself a pot like this one. Just enough for how many people you're cooking for. We can use two different types of potatoes, jazzy potatoes. So small ones, you can wash these and leave the skin on if you want your potato salad to have the skin on. Or with Mary Piper potatoes, or just white potatoes. I find these ones are quite nice because they are suitable for roasting, which means that they're not gonna mash up so much. So I use those. We've got beetroot. You can use two types of beetroot. This is a um, pickled beetroot. You can use ordinary beetroot that hasn't been pickled, but I do like the pickled one because it gives it that little bit of vinegary taste. And then we've got some eggs. You can put as many or as little eggs as you want in. I'm gonna use three eggs. And then I've got some garden mint. I always plant mint in the garden because it's so easy to grow. So that way you can eat it fresh when you want. And by the end of the year, when you finish growing, you can actually wash it and bring it in and dry it. So let's get started. So I like to allow about two potatoes per person or three potatoes per person. It's a very filling meal, put it that way. So you don't need too many. And these are quite large potatoes. So I'm going to start by washing these to make sure there's no mud on them. I'm going to peel these once they're boiled. There's two ways you can make this potato salad. You can peel your potatoes before you boil them, or you can boil them with the skin on and peel them once they're cooked. I find that peeling them afterwards, the potatoes are a little bit neater and not so mashy. So I'm just putting some cold water in here. You can put water from the kettle in to speed things up. I'm just going to start boiling these as they are and we are going to allow a little bit of extra room to put some eggs in as well. We're going to put our eggs in in the last five minutes when this is nearly finished boiling or you can boil them in a separate pan. I just keep them all in the same pot, save on washing up. Just drop them in in the last five minutes when the water's already boiling. Be careful with that because they do crack if you put them in very hot water from a height. So bring them close down and then pop them in to the saucepan. I'll show you that when I'm doing it. So let's get these on, get them boiling. They need about half an hour, maybe even 40 minutes to boil. But while they're boiling, you can go off and do other stuff, which is the beauty of this recipe. You might also want to add some garlic to your potato salad. So just crush it up as small as you can get it and put that in raw. It does get a bit smelly. So if you're gonna be around people, I wouldn't advise it. So I'm not putting garlic in mine today. Top whack on the hob. So that's going to start boiling very soon. And I like to use a lid on top to stop the steam escaping, which is what's going to help our potatoes to cook. We'll come back in about half an hour and check on progress. I'll show you how to make sure that your potatoes are ready. Right, so our potatoes are boiled. The ones on the top seem to have boiled quicker than the ones on the bottom, so you need to check if that happens to you. I think it depends on the type of potato, and they've gone a bit crumply, I don't know why. If you stick a fork in your potato, you don't want it too soft, but you also don't want it too hard, so that one needs a little bit more. This one's okay to come out. You can see most of the peeling is done by itself. This is why I just leave the peeling until after, because it's so easy to just take the skin off. So I've put them in a bowl. We're gonna start peeling those in a minute. And the way to put your eggs in so that they don't crack is put them on your spoon and put them in with a spoon so you don't burn yourself and then leave those for another five minutes. There's one potato that isn't totally cooked so I've left that in as well. And now we're gonna start peeling the potatoes. So you can see our eggs are boiling now. I'll show you a little trick of how to tell when your egg's done. So we take one out, put it on the surface, make sure it doesn't roll off, and then we spin it. It's not spinning in one spot, which means it's not ready yet. That's soft boiled. So we put it back in. And I'll show you what it looks like when it is done. It should be spinning in one spot. 
Okay, let's see if they're ready. That's spinning in one place now. In one spot. That's ready. So I've turned off the hob and we're going to start peeling our potatoes while those eggs are still in there. It doesn't matter if they're in there for a few minutes. So I like to get some newspaper to put my peelings on. And we've got a big bowl. This is bigger than we need, but I like a bigger bowl so I can stir it, mix it evenly. And we're just going to peel these off. You can see how easy it is once they're boiled. Let them cool down a little bit, otherwise you'll burn yourself. So we're just peeling off and tidying up, cutting off any dips and stuff. There might be dirt in there. We're just going to cut it into four, just like that, and drop it in the bowl. And you will be better off if you let these potatoes cool down a lot before you put beetroot in it if because uh, your beetroot will warm up so when you peel them after you've boiled them this is what it looks like and this is what i mean by the neater edges the neater sides the neater outside of the potato and when you cut it it shouldn't crumple this one isn't which is great so we've got our eggs all cooked I just need to put some cold water in here. Very hot. And just rinse it out. The cold water is going to help them to stop cooking because the eggs will carry on cooking if they're still hot. And it will help them to cool down so that you're not burning your fingers when you're doing it because we need to um, take the shells off now. While we're waiting for our eggs to cool down. We're going to get our beetroot and pour that straight in with the juice. Oh, I'm wearing a white top while doing this, not the best idea. We're just going to peel our eggs and then before we put them in the salad, I'm putting them back in the bowl of cold water to get rid of any bits of shell because that's the worst thing when you get shell in your food I'm going to use my little egg slicer, which is a little gadget you put your egg in, and then press down these little wire strings, cut your egg. So making sure there's no shell on it whatsoever, check it, put your egg on, oh, and slice, drop that into the bowl. Saves a lot of work. That's it. And then we're going to put some salt in. I'm going to put like half a tablespoon of salt in. About this much. Then we're going to get our mint in. Pour a little bit into my palm. You can put as much or as little as this as you want. The more salad you've got, the more mint you're going to need. And I just, just rub my palms together with the mint there so that it breaks it up into little pieces. Don't worry if you get the odd big one in. Or, as I said earlier, you can use fresh mint for this. And then we've got a lemon. I'm going to use a whole lemon. It's 
hardly got any seeds so I'm not going to bother with a lemon squeezer just squeeze it into a spoon oh so you could try and avoid the pips getting in and if they do take them out with your spoon if you're not using beetroot that is pickled you could put some vinegar in this as well because my beetroot's pickled I'm not going to bother with the vinegar and also my son doesn't like too much vinegar so mix it up we're also going to put some olive oil in I've got Olivio and that is it beautiful right we're going to taste it make sure it doesn't need any more salt mmm it's perfect I shouldn't be eating it from the bowl but yeah so you can eat this with fish tinned fish sardines tuna um, meat you can eat it on its own you can eat it with some pita bread some flat bread whatever you like and get your friends round and a big bowl of this what more do you need thanks for joining me guys thanks for watching if you haven't subscribed please do and i'll see you on the next video peace out mm -hmm. delicious